Hi everyone, happy Monday. I was planning to do a completely different episode for this week and had to like kind of scramble to figure something out for the last minute, but I hope and am planning to have this up in the next few hours. So hopefully this goes well. Unfortunately, there's been a lot of things going on with the economy and the job market. And because of that, a lot of people are being laid off, finding new jobs, finishing college and trying to find new jobs or internships. And it is really, 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 really tough. But along the way, as I've applied to an insane amount of internships and jobs. I've picked up a lot of tips and tricks. I guess that's like the positive of the suffering I had to go through for job applications. But anyways, I picked up a lot of things along the way and these are things that aren't talked about. It's not the standard thing that you'll hear in a lot of scenarios. So I wanted to pass the secret sauce, I guess, forward. And hopefully this can help somebody out there get an opportunity. But before I get started, I will do high low buffalo. And starting with my high, I got invited by Tiff to this Netflix screening. And it was a Netflix X Adobe event for Pride Month. And it was so freaking fun. Whenever Tiff and I go to like these random things that we just kind of, you know, say fuck it, let's just go. We end up having way more fun. And it's always way better than we expect. So this time, the event was a screening also with dinner and drinks and the food was so good it was this huge charcuterie board with like a lot of cheeses meats insane amount of dips and they also had dessert with it as well and we also got to watch a tv show that isn't out yet and we got to meet the cast which was so exciting and there was also live performances on top of this rooftop in New York and it was just so beautiful. It was just very, very cool and I'm so happy that I went and that Tiff invited me. I'm so thankful that she thought of me (laughs) for that event. And for my low, I'm just going to talk a little bit more about work because for some reason, I'm just kidding, not for some reason, I know that my work is shitty and that is why 95% of my lows are about work but this time I have a specific story and you guys would not believe what this freaking company is doing it's so messed up and sketchy but basically for most companies when you do a big round of layoffs you usually announce it to the public to your internal employees and in this case my company kind of got around having to announce it to the employees by calling it something other than a layoff. So they titled it RIF, which is this team slash program thing. And it stands for like resource reduction, something, something, I don't even know. But basically there's this program going around where they're laying people off, but they're not calling it a layoff. So they don't have to tell people formally And what happens is you just get this email from this team and they're just telling you, hey, you're let off from the company. And then after you kind of go through your emails and then after that day, your company laptop basically just stops working. It is so, it's so fucked up. It's so sketchy that they're able to kind of get around it and not have to tell people that there's going to be a round of layoffs coming up and it keeps people from being prepared literally any day from now anybody even i could get an email from this team and just be laid off and the only reason why you or others might know about this is literally if they know somebody who got laid off or they themselves got laid off yeah i just found out about that and that's insane that's just the cherry on the top of the giant sunday of crap that i have to deal with with this job So there's that. 
And then finally, my buffalo. It's also about work. Oh my god, this makes me feel like I'm just my job, but I'm I'm really not. I promise. Uh, but for my buffalo, so I talked about this in my vlog, but for some reason I decided to be a mentor for the intern program, and I got assigned four interns, which is kind of nice. Kind of not because I really am not pro this company. So when they ask me questions, I don't do a great job of hiding how I truly feel. But anyways, I was assigned these interns, and their first internship day, I went into office and I met all of, well, not all of them, but most of them, and it was so weird because I ended up being surrounded in a circle by these interns, and they were just like. Asking me questions, and I don't know if many of you have experience or are familiar with what frat or sorority rushing is, but it was very, very similar. Where you have the person who's already in the program, has the job, has the opportunity, and they have all these people who would love to be in their position, like ask them and basically kiss up to them, and it was just so, so weird. <laughs> These interns were just like so naive and so happy, optimistic as they should be because they haven't been tainted, and so they were just like kissing my ass, and I just felt so weird about it. This one girl, we were talking about where we're from, and I was saying that I was from OC, and this other person was from OC, and then he said that he went to USC, and I was like, oh my gosh, like. I went to UCLA, and then a girl behind me was like, "Oh my gosh, I go to UCLA!" And I was like, "Whoa!" And it's so funny because I hated UCLA, so it's like not that big of a deal to me. And I also don't like really associating with UCLA. But she was like, "Oh my god, UCLA!" And then she was like, "Oh my god, alumni! You're an alumni!" And I was like, literally like that in that exact tone. In that exact way, I could see it in my head how she reacted to me saying that I went to UCLA, and I was just I was I was stunned, but I didn't show it. But internally, I was like, oh my god, it was just such a weird experience. That was my high low buffalo, and now moving on to tips, tricks, advice, the secret, the down low for getting any job or internship that you would want in your life. Okay, so there's five key things that you need to have perfect in order to get the job, the internship that you want. And I basically say perfect, not to be over exaggerating, but it's just really bad out there right now. So yeah, basically perfect in order to get that job and internship. Once you have those five things and. All the stars align for those five things. You can get whatever job and internship you're looking for. Then there's a sixth thing, and that's just an added thing that I feel like a lot of people talk a lot about and focus on for applying to jobs and internships. But I don't think it's necessary because I've gotten plenty of opportunities without the last thing. So. The five things that you must have and that must perfectly align for you to get a job is the timing that you find the job, the resume. Number three is your cover letter. Four is persistence, and five is luck. And then the sixth thing that everyone just talks way too much about, but I think is optional, is networking. Okay, so starting off with timing when you're finding the job, because it's so competitive nowadays, a lot of jobs and recruiters will tell you that they read through every single application, which could be true, but by the time that they read the first maybe thirty, forty applications, they already found a very solid group of ten. To fifteen people that they will interview, and it's easy to filter down the ten to fifteen people to one person for that position. And you have to think about 
resources and time that they have. So they only have a certain amount of people that are looking through these applications. Also a certain amount of time that they have to look through the applications. Over time, it's going to be less likely that you'll be seen as valuable and worth their time because they probably already found really strong candidates within the first 30 to 40 applications. And so with that being said, you want to be one of the fastest applicants. And the way that I do this is I set a 24 hour filter on all of my LinkedIn job boards so that I can see the most recent job listings. And if they're older than 24 hours, I won't even bother applying. Like it's already too old for me. And it's a little bit stressful because it turns applying to a job into a race, but it kind of is. And so keep that in mind. Timing does matter. Just to give an example of this. So I applied to New York Times one time and I got really lucky because I saw the application within the hour that it came out and I applied within two hours and I think the only reason why that I got a call back for that job position is because I replied so quickly that the hiring manager literally responded to my application within the next two, three hours. And New York Times is a really difficult place to apply to. It's really big company. It's like Disney. It's like all the other companies that are, that everybody knows about. And so... I know that I only got really lucky because of my time and I have applied to plenty of jobs where I was way more qualified and had the same resume but did not even hear back because I was like a day or two late. So just keep that in mind. I would say for sure though, if you don't apply within the week, it's already done. Don't even bother applying at all. So the second thing is the resume. Nowadays with technology and how quickly hiring managers and the hiring team has to read through applications, it is important to keep them in mind when you're writing your resume and making it super duper clear and obvious that you are fit for the role. Some tips and tricks for the resume specifically are to bold things and use numbers. So go through the job application and specifically pick out words, phrases, and skills that they mention and word them exactly the same way in your resume so that it's super obvious when they're scanning through that you are clear fit for the job position. And something else to keep in mind is not only their time, but the fact that hiring managers are most of the time not specialized in the field that you're applying for. So let's say you're applying for a marketing role. The hiring manager probably doesn't know what it's like to be a marketing person. They could care less because they're probably reading resumes for marketing people, HR people, managers, lawyers, whatever it is. And because they're, you know, looking at resumes for all these positions, they don't need to be a specialized person for that role. And so you have to remember that they don't know all these like nuance and specialty terms unless it's on the job posting itself. And also on top of that, some more tips to keep in mind are for the resume, you want to make sure that you get straight to the point with your numbers because numbers stand out way more than text. And so you wanna be very clear with how much growth you created. If you helped a business grow, you don't wanna just say, I helped a business grow a lot. You wanna say, I helped a business grow 3.79%, something like that. And it will stand out. You also don't want to just estimate using numbers divisible by 10, so 300% to 50% because it looks too much like you faked it. So you wanna be very specific as possible with that number. Another piece of advice for the resume is to use action verbs when you're describing what you did 
for each position, make sure that you're using an action verb immediately. So if you, for example, you led a team of 34 people, you want to start off with led team of 34 people. You want to use really unique and different action verbs every time. So lead, managed, spearheaded, discovered, analyzed. They sound very punchy and they sound really good honestly you want to talk up what you've done for your cover letter which is the third key part of getting any job and internship that you want generally you want to follow a similar rule with the resume and cover letter where you want to talk yourself up and just exaggerate you really want to be a storyteller maybe you're a cashier at mcdonald's you don't want to say like you know i was a cashier person (laughs) instead you want to say managed business funds in a quick fast-paced environment while interacting with different customer bases okay there i just really talked through being a cashiering person you really want to just sell it and also with the cover letter you should also use bolding So you want to bold those phrases, those key sentences that will draw your hiring manager, your recruiting team's attention that you are a good fit. And with a cover letter, you must have it, okay? Just don't even bother questioning whether or not it's worthwhile to have a cover letter. If there is a place for you to upload or write down a cover letter, have a cover letter. It will make you immediately stand out from most applicants that are too lazy to bother with writing a distinct, unique cover letter tailored to a job position and that company. With your cover letter, you want to milk out two to three positions that are most relevant to the job position, the industry that you're applying for. And when I say milk it out, you want to give very specific scenarios of where you demonstrated something that is relevant to the job position. So for example, if I'm a lawyer and they're asking for somebody who has written a brief before, you want to talk about position that you've had in the past where you've written a brief or even multiple briefs and talk about the thought process that you had, the success that it led to because you yourself wrote that brief. So again, focus on those numbers, focus on the impact that you created and specifically what you've done. Make it very obvious that you've had previous experience doing exactly what they're asking you to do in the new job. So the next thing, the fourth thing, is to be persistent. And I'm saying this because you are You might be the best candidate for this position and plenty of positions out there. You yourself know yourself really well that you can do whatever this job is asking for and you can do it well. But obviously, there are plenty of other people who can do the same, unfortunately. You're going to have to be competing with an insane amount of people who are just as qualified for a job. So you're just going to have to be persistent And at the end of the day, something that really helped me with not getting bogged down, upset with how many applications I've been applying for and how every single time I keep getting rejected, I keep reminding myself that it might not be for me. And it's just not in my plan. It's not faith. It's just the five key things just didn't align for this position for very good reasons and you could be dodging a bullet even though you can't figure out what exactly you're dodging you're dodging a bullet one example is you could have been hired for that job without realizing that you, there was a toxic team environment and you're dodging a bullet by not getting accepted into that job you don't know these little things until you're actually in the job also remember at the end of the day you're applying to work even more like it's not really that exciting what you're applying for you're not applying for this opportunity to get like a million dollars for free you're literally applying to work to give up 
your time and freedom. Just remember that. So it's okay if it doesn't work out. And just remember, eventually it will work out and you'll see why it worked out for you. The next thing and the very final thing that you must have, that you have to get right in order to get the job and internship you want is luck. And this is literally so out of your control, unfortunately. And what I have to say is focus on the four things that I mentioned before I said luck. Make sure you have those perfect basically every single time so that whenever you do have luck, it's on your side. And you can't have anything else that was in your control holding you back. And by statistics, one out of the other whatever XYZ positions that you've applied to have to work out because that's just the way luck works. Okay, so there's that. Those are the musts. And then for the optional, networking. Networking, let me just say really quickly, I'm going to go on a tangent because I feel very strongly about this thing. Everyone and their mothers talks about networking and how important it is. Yes, yes, it is important. And yes, you can get a lot of opportunities if you do network your way to the opportunity. That's why we have Nepo babies. But I hate it. I hate networking. It is so painful to do. I feel so fake. I feel like I'm acting a certain way that I would never act just to get something from somebody. It's such a lucrative, messed up thing and it makes me feel very icky while and after I do it. So it causes a lot of anxiety for me. So I get it. If you don't want to do it, I hate doing it. In my opinion, I have been very successful without it. And I don't think it's necessary, but it does help. There's been some positions that I've heard back from because I knew somebody in it and I leveraged it in the application and I said, yes, I know somebody at this company and they referred me. But there's also plenty of positions where I had no idea who was in the company and I still got a call back and I still got the job. So keep that in mind. But with networking, the advice that I have if you're going to do it is to start early. And that is 90% of the only way that it will be useful. So if you are a sophomore or junior right now waiting to apply for a job in your senior year, it is time to start. If I start networking right now, it will be useful for me in the next few months, like two, three, four months from now. It won't be helpful for me this week or next month. It's going to take some time to develop because you want to make it less obvious that you're talking to this person for a job that just came out this week. I've talked to people and I've created spreadsheets and kept up with them. I'll like write down their name, I'll write down their LinkedIn profile, I'll write down some notes about things that we talked about and whether or not I heard back from them to keep track of it and then I will also keep track of how many times I've talked to them and what I've talked to them about so that when I come back to them, it's always easy for me to refresh my memory. It's just not natural (laughs) to network. It's really, really hard to reach out to people that you aren't naturally and easily connected with on a day-to-day basis. It's not like the world is helping you see them more often. So you have to awkwardly go out of your way to force this communication and interaction. And it's really obvious that you're doing that. So yeah, I mean, you can learn a lot from these networking sessions, which is a plus. But at the end of the day, there's only so much you can learn from other people by just talking to them. You got to do the thing. I feel like that's where a lot of the learning comes from. If you do use a networking tactic, start early and just know that it will only be beneficial more so in the long run and not so much in the next week or two. Hopefully this helps somebody out there get a job or internship that they've always wanted. And unfortunately, because of how competitive and how much this world is changing, this piece of advice might not be helpful after a year or two from now but 
it should be solid for the next year or two. I know that my dad, who used to apply for jobs like 10 years ago, all he had to do was literally send a resume and he would hear back. So nowadays, that is not the case. If you just randomly send your resume, it's super duper hard to hear back. Uh, you have to do a lot more to stand out. And that's just the case. So yeah, and also keep in mind that I'm speaking from the perspective of the tech industry. Other industries that are extremely different might do things very differently. So keep that in mind. Thanks for listening. And don't forget to leave a rating if you haven't already. And also subscribe or follow this podcast so that you're updated whenever I release another episode. Bye.